Hi everyone, you're with Lucy from Art Shed Angel and I'm excited to be part of the Hop Along Red Riding Hood Hop which is part of live art journaling and self-development. So there's going to be a lot of different videos for you to watch so make sure you look at the description to see where to go next. And before you go, subscribe to my channel. So thank you and let's get started. So I'm going to do, be doing a, an acrylic painting today of Little Red Riding Hood and I've done a preliminary sketch just to get ideas together. Now this is available to you if you go to my website there is a free download of this picture so that you can paint along with me and I hope you enjoy giving it a go and using different colours and things as you do it. Now I um, have done a lot of face drawing in my time and whilst I'm doing this I'm always looking at proportions making sure that my eyes are nice and round I love big pupils on my um, girls faces because large pupils always make people look a little bit more friendly so here I am just sketching her basically and thinking about where I'm going to put things now I have done it a little bit different to this initial sketch because I didn't really like that she was right in the center so I've put her slightly to the left hand side so here I'm just drawing in basically what I want to do I'm going to do a lot of it with a brush when I start actually painting so here we've got the wolf going in and this time I sort of decided I didn't want both his eyes. I wanted him to be a little bit mysterious and I just did the one eye so that he's sort of peeking out from behind her. So I'm just doing this all on watercolour paper. All the links and all the th products that I've used are in the description. So now I'm going to get started and I'm just using a ceramic palette so that I can wash stuff off and I'm using golden paints. Now this one here is I'm just going to do a little bit of a um, turquoise colour but I want to make a bit of light behind her. So the first thing I'm doing here is painting the white and I could just leave the white paper but it, painting the white first gives me something to blend the turquoise on. So here I am just putting that turquoise background and I'm going to put some trees and things on that afterwards. So I'm just painting in like a halo around her. Now you can see here that looks quite dark so I do go over with some white to really blend it in. The beauty of acrylics is that you can do that. You can add the white um, and if it's not white enough you can wait for it to dry and add even more white. You can see here I've also I want to put a bit of darkness around him and especially that side because it's the mysterious side of the picture. Now the next thing I'm going to do is um, do a base colour for her cape and rather than just plain old red I am using red with a little bit of yellow on it because it's a bit more light coming on the top of her hood there and I want it to be quite bright there and then I'm going to go darker towards the bottom. So that just makes it give, gives your eyes somewhere to look first. So you can see here I'm using the darker colour and towards the end of the video I'm going to be doing some glazing with some medium and um, some darker paints just to get a little bit of shadow and highlight in her. So the one thing when you paint with acrylics or do any kind of painting is what I do is I block in my areas first so I'm blocking in my areas just to make to give shapes to start off with all of the rest of it gets done later on so I'm just blocking in areas so that I've got somewhere to work with and that's a lovely purple that I'm putting in there at the moment and that's just in the shadow areas rather than using black purple looks lots more lively so I'm just placing that in there now and then I'm going to mix up some green for her eyes so I'm just using the same turquoise from the sky and adding some yellow in it and painting her eyes in first now you can see here I've used the light green first and I'm going to add some more color to that. 
So now I'm going to use some of that same turquoise just to put some dark areas straight underneath her eyelids. So when you look at someone's eyes, you'll see that there's a bit of a shadow from their eyelids over their eyes. And we want to give these eyes a nice glassy look. So we want to have some brights in it, some lights in it. Um, I'm going to use a black now to do the highlights in the eyes or to paint the pupils of the eyes and you can see I'm leaving quite large highlights because eyes look friendlier when they have large highlights in it and this is just a black I'm using and then I'm going to add a little bit of white just to put an extra highlight in either side because when an eye is very very clear um, the light actually shoots either side of it so you can see here I'm also adding a bit of yellow to this gone into the black a little bit so I just need to touch that up so you can see here they start to look glassy like a marble and what I'm doing now is adding the shadow to the eyes because there are the actual whites of people's eyes are not actually white they're quite dark here I'm just painting a very base layer of pink on her lips and this is just a pink I've made with some white and some um, magenta and this is her hair which I'm just using the black up at the moment I'm painting with acrylics and it's very very hot here so the acrylics are drying very quickly so I'm just making sure that I'm using up the paint before it completely dries I often do the eyes first because it sets the mood of the picture and I'm really really happy with how glassy and nice they look so now I'm going to mix some skin color so I'm actually using a yellow ochre um, and some white and some magenta that I already had mixed up there so I'm adding the yellow ochre to the white first and then I'm adding a tiny bit of magenta till I have the color I want and I'm going to paint this over the whole face um, being acrylics I can add over the top of it so I'm just going to paint the whole face first in this um, this skin color and then I'm going to add some rosy cheeks to her and some other little effects and you can see here that it's a nice sort of base color to start off with so just use a flat brush for this we don't want our paint to be really um, we don't want long sort of track marks through our paint so I'm just smoothing it out so it's nice and smooth now for the um, cheeks rather than just using magenta I'm actually mixing magenta in with my skin color so that I end up with a color that actually blends nicely now depending on how bright you want these cheeks to be you can put some more in there but you can see here if I go too dark I can actually take some more of that flesh color and go back to it so I didn't want her cheeks to be over the top because she's got quite a red coat on and I didn't want it to be too much happening on her face now I'm doing a bit of a purple shadow under her chin because I used the purple for that background um, and the darks in there but I am going to do a glaze over that later so sometimes I put these colors in because I don't want sort of dead grays and things like that so I've added that purple into the flesh color now I'm also going to do her eyelids in this case in purple but you can see there I leave a little bit of a highlight in her eyelid and that's for me to add some white so that it looks like the sun's kind of hitting her eyelid and the white is very much in the same position as what I have that highlight in her eye so that we can have that kind of bright look like there's really light on her face because there's light there and you know there's we want this picture to be all about light and dark the story of Red Riding Hood so when I've mixed that flesh color with a little bit more brown a little bit more magenta I have added some purple as well and you can see here as I'm adding this this is a shadow color I don't want dark shadows on her face because it's 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 whimsical so I've just put a little bit and then I'm just taking my brush to smooth that area out because I do not like hard shadows on the side of noses so I'm just putting little shadows here I went too dark on her chin so I've just gone over and put a little bit more on her chin I am going to use a bit of a glaze on this later on but at the moment I'm just putting 
the um, base color down. So I'm outlining with a fine brush her eyes to give her those that real kind of nice finished look. And you can see that highlight just above the highlights in her eyes look really sort of nice and bright. Because we want, we want people to look at this picture and actually the first thing they see are the eyes on the little girl. They're kind of sad, but not real sad. And see with the nostrils, all I'm putting in is the nostrils and I'm just putting in the line uh, in the middle of her mouth and then I'm just doing some outlining here and I often when I do things like this put a little heart on her cheek so I'm going to fill that heart in with some magenta later and with her lips I started with a real pink but I've got a little bit more red this time because I really think the lips shouldn't be the pink to me just didn't go with the red of her cape so I've just made this a little bit bit redder you see here I'm not going she looks like she's got a mustache right now but I'm filling that in so that I get just the right color on her lips with some nice highlights now her eyelashes I'm just doing with my black brush it's a bit of a shadow under her nose you can see there's that little shadow under her nose as well as I do this, I touch up areas and make sure that I'm happy with them. Some little eyelashes on the bottom. Don't put great big eyelashes. And always when you do eyelashes, give them a nice curl. And you can see here, I've just painted that heart in with the, with the pink and I've put highlights on the heart. So I am mixing some of the red that I've used with some purple to do these shadow areas. So purple is such a good color to use for shadow areas. So instead of doing very harsh grays and blacks, I've just added some purple. And you can see here how quickly you can put shape into, the, into her outfit by just putting some shadows and highlights. Because we have the base colors down already, it makes it so easy for us with acrylics to go over and add the yellows for the highlights, you know, just to darken areas with the purple. And now I'm just going to take some black to outline her clothes as well. So you can see here, just using your brush, your black the fine brush, make sure you're using a nice fine brush with a nice tip on it when you're doing this. You don't want to be painting with something that's like dog-eared. So this is important. Now I'm also going to put a little bit of a bow on her that, to hold her dress on. And just adding some, you know, little touches here and there. Now this is the beauty of it. We have started with block colors and we have added to it. Now we're going to do some glazing. So I'm just using some burnt sienna and some, this is matte medium. And I'm just putting that over the top of the purple and dulling it down a little bit. I'm putting it over her flesh color on one side of her face because I want it to just be slightly darker. And glazing is where you use a medium, which is light to make um, an area darker yet transparent and I'm also here you can see adding some light bits so I'm adding some white to her nose because we want her nose to come forward so we darken backwards and put some light areas on her nose so I'm also using that same glaze on her hands and just at starting to paint in this wolf. So the wolf I'm wanting to do very simply. He's kind of in the background, so I'm just using black for him. I'm not even using a lot. I'm gonna add a little bit of purple to the black later, but at the moment, I'm just doing him in black. He's almost like, um, he's not a shadow. He's, um, he's, there because we can see his eyes but we want him to be mysterious so I'm just painting him in with my black acrylic making sure I keep that eye looking kind of evil I think he's got a nice sort of scary looking eye and I'm making sure as I brush the wolf that I'm doing fuzzy edges on him so that it almost looks like the light is coming through his fur and I will also add 
later on some white highlights on that now with the eye and with his nose here I'm, I've done his nose in with purple but I'm going to put a highlight on his nose and here I'm just going to add the dark to his eyes you can see that sort of look now I also thought to myself a bit of red needs to be in that eye so just getting a little bit of red to make that eye a bit fiery and a bit scary looking and a highlight on his nose so we know where it is now this is where I'm putting the highlights on the fur and that sort of transforms whether we've got the light coming before her, from behind her we've now got that light happening on the edges of his fur because fur allows light to come through and I think he's pretty as much as I really want to do with him. Now I'm drying this off, but I now want to add some things to the background. The background's kind of not doing it for me. It needs something. So here I'm going to do some twigs and some kind of sh scary tree branches because, you know, Little Red Riding Hood went through the forest to go to the, um, to the house where she met the wolf. So I'm just putting some pine a pine tree in now pine trees are so simple you just do like little brush strokes down like that and we end up with a nice pine tree and all of this is really going to be in silhouette i don't want so much in the background that i lose her within it one of the things when you're painting it's really important sometimes to just allow one image to be the main focus and she's the focus all this stuff around her is just added interest and all these branches facing her like this is also making our eye look down at her and I think that's really kind of nice that it's um, all sort of going downwards towards her face even these little side ones here Now the last thing I want to do here is just add a little bit more glazing to her um, cape because I'm sort of thinking it's a bit too bright, a little bit, you know, shadow under her hair. So what I've done here is, <laughs> it's actually black but it looks shiny on camera, but I've just put a shadow under her fringe there. And I've decided to finish her off. This, I wanted them to be in snow. so. Um, some of my friends in England have been looking forward to snow, so I'm just putting snow all over her. Here in Australia, we don't have snow where I live, but I thought how nice to have them in the forest and it's snowing at the same time. So really nice blotches of white to finish her off. Now I'm hope... I. <laughs> Now I hope you enjoyed this video, um, I do many different projects so if you'd like to subscribe to my channel please make sure you click the link and also remember that this is a YouTube hop from Live Art Journaling and Self Development, it's a group that I'm an admin of and um, you can join our group and we do a live video every week with Jolene Payne or myself doing all sorts of mixed media techniques that you will really enjoy. Um, I do watercolors, mixed media, um, jelly plates, many, many different things. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hop along to the next person. I will be putting the products in the description and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much. You're with Lucy and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.